us, everybody. Thank, Thank you, everybody. Big Lee. Uh, so tonight, Saturday night, we're going to do a uh, retro break. So we got uh, 1990 Tops Baseball, um, 36 packs. Um, so, of course, we have the notable King Griffey Jr., the second-year card, Rookie Cup. And it's actually a pretty um, pretty sought-after card. And in PSA 10, it fetches a pretty, pretty nice penny. Uh, you got the Frank Thomas Rookie. And, um, of course, a ton of Hall of Famers in this. So we're going to get into this thing and have some fun with it. Um, <laughs> the first thing I want to note is the uh, size of this box. So, um, you compare this to the, uh, average thickness of a hobby box nowadays, it's kind of crazy, but, uh, anyway, um, right, it's a massive set. These were the 792 card sets, so, um, there's, you know, to be quite honest, there's not actually a guarantee that you'll, you'll get, you know, the second year Griffey out of here. Uh, typically, I remember back in the day when I first started as a kid, um, basically you had to buy two boxes to kind of guarantee you'd kind of get every card. If you're getting, man, was it close to 1,600 cards? Uh, just to complete your set and then sometimes you would still be missing like a card or two but um so what if i do is pause this open up i'm not sure if i'm gonna open all these guys i'll probably only open half uh we'll do two parts because it's uh it'll take a while and these are the uh the cool cello packs they're not the wax packs, so it's uh pretty cool like that so i think that's what we'll do we'll open up half and there's gum in them man <laughs> i can feel it it's all broken up oh man so we'll, we'll get out a nice stack here, and uh, we'll save the other for tomorrow. We'll do it in two, two sections, right? Because one, I think this gum is going to go everywhere, which is going to be a little bit messy. So I don't want gum flakes all over the place. So we'll do it that way. All right, move this over here. And um, I'm going to pause this video, open some. I'll open up a couple on camera here to see how they go. All right, hang on. All right, guys, back. Um, that actually was surprisingly uh, painless. Um, check these out. So these cello packs, um, you know what I mean? The wax, you kind of got, they can get sticky or too sticky or open up weird, but these kind of pull right off the middle. Um, open up clean so you can get the corner out. And then, voila. And then uh, that top one has got like some dust on it from the gum. Um, but the gum <laughs> is in r really good condition. Now, it's hard as a rock, right? And you would probably disintegrate in 10 seconds if you put it in your mouth, or who knows what it would give you. But I don't know. I, I guess I was uh, kind of impressed by that. I don't know why I saved two stacks of gum over here. Um, but uh, I don't know. So uh, one more on camera, right? But uh, yeah, so this is cool. These open up way better. A little bit of gum dust on the uh, on the mat here, but I think uh, I think it'll be okay. Just like that. Look at that gum. Anybody wants the gum, let me know. I'll send it to you for free. <laughs> We'll put this over here. All right. Uh, so we got a, a couple of uh, actually got one big tall stack right there. So that's uh, half of the uh, of the box. So we got uh, what 18, 18 packs we opened there. So we'll flip through these, right? All right. Let's go. So um, familiar with the design, right? It's kind of uh, different colors. Um, I can't remember if the colors are unique to teams or if they're just random. Um, but, uh, we'll go through these and, and check them out. So, Charlie Huff, right? Akendo, Griffin with the Dodgers, Paul Gibson. Remember those, those big glasses in the 80s, 90s? Those are, those are rough, man. Uh, Terry Francona. A little skinny there. The Wild Thing. That beard always looked weird to me. Um, that one's off center. Uh, Lee Smith. I think I can bring some meat on. Sasser. Willie Wilson. Jeff Pico, Denny Walling, long career with the Astros, who then went over to the Cardinals. Roger McDowell, Jay Mabbitt, remember the guy? He didn't uh, have a part of a hand there, and he, he he pitched, and then he switched the glove over. That's pretty cool. Um, I don't, I think he's the last player I can ever remember, you know, having uh, having that situation physically and still going out there. Paul Coleman, there's a draft pick card. You don't have a clue about Paul Coleman. Doesn't look that much of a player though. Uh, but anyway. Um, and there's that. Browning. Art Howe manager card. Jeff Leonard. Yeah, I remember back in the day you'd get like, uh, that one's got some nice color to it. Some of them are a little bit, seem a little bit more faded than others. I don't know if it's because of where they were positioned in the pack, but like this card, the color's fantastic. I don't know if it's showing up on, on camera good, but the red and blue is popping pretty pretty nice there. A little bit of a snowflake, but that was very common in these cards. Like I see, look at this one. This one, you know, this the focus on it is just bad, right? <laughs> this is 
This was, this was junk wax error photography. Uh, draft pick Ben McDonald. There's Roger Clemens. A little off to the left to right. Jay Jackson. Ford and RJ Reynolds. So I don't. I can feel it like you can see the you can see the little stuff on the thing. That's all powder from the gum. But that was a deal back then, right? Um, what year was it? They finally took the gum out of the packs. Was it ninety one? Let me help me out on that one. That should be like there's Dempsey. I remember he still always just wore the uh, the old school hat underneath. Um, like part of. Uh, Card collecting history, right? Who, uh, what year did they stop putting the gum in there? Danny Darwin, the bottom bullet. Nice pitch for the Astros. Rogers South killed. How cool they started doing this though. Ninety. Marquis Grissom. I wonder what this is for. I didn't read it. Toss Magazine. Baseball fans and card collectors. Interesting. Anybody, everybody, anybody ever get this? Tops Magazine? I'm going to fill this out and send it in and see what happens. <laughs> Andy Hawkins. Alan Calderon. I lose this. Man, outside of that uh, Clement, it's pretty, been pretty quiet. There's a Mike Scott All-Star. That's cool. Scott could bring it, man. He had some really, really, really productive years in the Astro with the Astros. The 86 season, and it may have been one of the most dominant ones ever. His record was only 18 and 8, but man, he was just crushing people. And I'm telling you, man, everybody knows it. If the Mets don't win that game six, that means Scotty's pitching in game seven. And they, I don't know, I think they may have had four hits on him the whole series or something like that. Um, he would have crushed him. We would have went to the World Series. Um, Craig Biggio, second year. The left center, left to right. Harnish. Harnish paid for the Astros, too. Kurt Gibson. He's <laughs> a little perplexing look. <laughs> uh, Terry. Todd Zeal, Future Stars. We got what? Pull two Hall of Famers so far. Who else do we have? Oh, and Scotty, not a Hall of Famer, but heck of a player. Mingo Ramos. See all this stuff on here. Oof. And he just it, it wipes right off right, but it's just like man. Can you imagine like that on, on today's card? No oh, Hall. Kill this. I remember most of these guys, but some are like man. Who the heck is that? Terry Mulholland. Still will. Gerald Young. He was a speecher for the Astros. Right. Played a lot of center field. Just uh, didn't have a good bat, and I'm not sure how long he lasted in the in the majors. The Valle. There's a nice Nolan Ryan, a little tribute card. Harold Baines, Rick Russell. So Rick Russell actually taught Mike Scott the split finger fastball. What the uh, rumor has it, Scotty was a uh, gosh a pitcher that was kind of a you know really you know run of the mill, right? And then uh, no, it wasn't Rick Russell. It was the uh, who was the manager for um, the Giants back in the day? I can't remember his name. Older guy. Uh, it'll come to me a little bit. He taught Scotty the uh, the split finger, and that kind of changed everything in his career. It was Robbie Alomar. Old Crucky. He was a funny guy, man. Apier. Sacks. Good player. That card is actually pretty well centered all the way around. That's a nice card. That was, that's one they could grade out. Sometimes it even it's not a Hall of Famer, I'll put it to the side. If it looks like it could grade out. And a dime, I'll put it over there. These turn back the clocks are pretty cool. Because um, there's people out there, right, wanting to collect the set and a 10. Um, this Rhino is just, just a tad bigger on the right-hand side, though. Maybe a little bit bigger on top, too. And that's the thing with this set, guys. It's, um, so you got this border all the way around that's got these designs in it that, to the eye, I think it, it, it makes it easier than if it's just a plain white to kind of see because you can kind of almost count the little designs. And same thing, top to bottom, uh, to see if you're off or not.
me. Yeah, there's someone out there that's going to want need like a manager card and a 10 to complete a set. I heard that there's a smulty. Is that third year? Then turn back the clock. I'm going to keep those over there just for fun. Joe Carter. Terry Poole, play for the kids. So I just, the other day they had a trivia question. I was watching the game. I didn't know he was Canadian. Um, born in Canada. Let's see if it says it on here. Uh, acquired free agent, born Saskatchewan, Canada. There you go. But his home is Missouri City, Texas. <laughs> There's Lasorda. Actually, that was a great out of 10. Someone would buy it. No doubt. Jeff Reardon. Rob Dibble, he was nasty, man. Steve Lyons. Clark. There's Keith Hernandez. The Cobra. Like Hall of Famers that have um, just their, their you know, hobby still really good. As, you know, Nolan... Um, Ricky Henderson, the card will sell a bot green reader rookie. Never heard of him. Ken Overfill, Daniel Petrelli. There's a Greg Jeffries. Remember, man, he was like, so Greg Jeffries, for you guys that go back, um, for your youngsters, but uh, you guys are back in the day collecting him. He was basically like the, the Ronald Acuna of 1988. This guy was supposed to be all world everything and his hobby went through the roof and this this guy was the hottest guy i'd ever seen in terms of a hobby having such a demand and he, he flamed out <laughs> glenn wilson went to sam houston state there Let's say these uh those baytown home montgomery no we did play sam houston state in for the astros so that was cool to see he was on the uh, broadcast for a while, every now and then. Ramon Martinez, he always had a weird body. Look at those, like, no muscle definition whatsoever. His, bi his, his elbow is bigger than his bicep. That's what I remember about the guy, but he's a big dude. Kind of weird. Tanana. Bob Rogers. Bob, don't call me Buck Rogers. Come on, let's get a gear for here. Get some action, man. Let's kind of... I'm fun reminiscing here, but... Uh... About some players, the gravy. Start going a little quicker. There's McGuire. A little fatter left to right. Cool looking card though. Zane Smith. This guy was always odd looking to me. Played a long time for the uh, the Braves. There's like Pedro. On to the Cardinals. I get in. Batters at fifteen percent, so it's a good thing I only decided to do half of this. Brady Anderson. Howie Valentine. Oh, Fred Lynn. Pascal Hopper is. So this dude was I don't know if you you know this guy. So this guy would do pickoff moves in between his legs. He'd throw an Ephus pitch. This guy was a character, man. Um, <laughs> always, always interesting to see. Matty Noakes. He was a highly prospected young catcher. Old Cam Boyd. There's a Maddox. Wow, that one looks pretty good. Hmm. We'll see. There's a brother, Mike. Andy Bennis. Eric Anthony. Same thing. This is a guy who was supposed to be a 
Makes a big deal. Had all kinds of power. He hit one up into the seats of the Astrodome. They had a star. They had to put a star by up there to mark what was hit. It was unbelievable. Crazy power this dude had. But uh, couldn't hit a curveball. And that's what happens. There's an Ozzy Smith All Star. Todd Bendinger. Tony Pena. Nick Road, I don't remember him being on the Astros. Oh yeah, I do. The Raider played for the Astros. I think he was an original Astro, right? In sixty in the sixty two team. Don Zimmer. Rasmussen. There's Rafi. I did not. <laughs> Jack Morris, Hall of Famer. Dante Bichette, the father of young Bo. Some similarities, right? You guys see it? All right. Elster was a young prospect, too. He didn't really you know, turn out to be much of anything. I say that. I mean, the guy probably played six or seven years, so he, you know, it's not, you know, it's like it's easy to stay in the major leagues for six or seven years as Billy Ripken. Danny Gladden. Eisenreich. There's Nolan. The 5,000. So I guess he had a big tribute in here. That's cool that he started like honoring him like while he was playing. Kind of interesting, right? Andy Myers. There's an Ozzy. The lost her left to right. Kevin Brown. Ugh, single handedly took the Astros out. What was that, 95 or 94? Can't remember. There's Dot Gooden. Oh, flip. All right, I put those up there wrong. Nope, just a flip. Barfield. There's a Donnie Baseball. Way off center left to right. Hair Reynolds. Starting to hit a little bit of a doubles now. Every so often. Not too many though. Unless I just haven't recognized it that much. Jack Clark's got a swing like there was nothing to do. Coleman. There's a Boggs. Off center. All right, last little stack here of these first 18 packs. There it is. A little bigger on the right, though. She may come back a nine. May send it in just to send it. Sorry, the camera doesn't want to focus, but it's just like, you know, some of these pitchers are sharper than others. That's not common back in the day, right? Or not uncommon, excuse me. Nicky Thon. Yeah, this would be a tough pull, guys, to get a 10 out of those. There's Ruben Sierra. Um, I mean, a 10 out of any of these cards. There's just so much can go wrong. And the card stock, it's it's not of the best quality. And I'm feeling right now they're pretty thin. There's a crime dog. Actually, really thin. Like, compared to, like, an 87 tops, there's not much to them. There's another one. Now the Amoroff Center. Or is it now? That one's a little bit better. See how it's got like these printing ink flows. This picture's a lot more sharp, but you see these right there. I'm saying this is, like I said, that's the era, right? Quality wasn't the biggest deal. Corn's already bad on it too. Karen Gordon, that's like the same pack back to back. Dickie Thon, it's the same. And that wasn't uncommon too. You get one pack and you'd, you'd recognize it right after you open it up. Um, you'd see like the same series of cards. It's, I'm sure it still happens now, but it was very, very obvious back in the day. The 80s and early 90s. Hey, Rigetti. All right, guys, so that's the first 18 packs. Um, we'll get this one loaded up and uh, we'll finish the rest uh, tomorrow, maybe Monday. Thanks, appreciate it. Uh, check the little button down here to subscribe and respect the hobby. Check you out later. Thanks.